I was at Acadia, I was 21. Um, and to rewind even farther back, I was 17. I went to Acadia, played football, 265 pounds, didn't really fit in to the whole uh, athlete student thing. So I was failing everything. I was in biology. I couldn't get through school and football and you know normal social life at school. Mm -hmm. So in second year, I kind of dropped 60 pounds. I started playing lacrosse, running a lot, and went into business. And I never took a business course before. And so this course at Acadia that ended up starting the business was called Venture Creation. There was only eight of us in the classroom at Acadia. They said start a business plan. And I kind of got excited about it pretty quick and started making hoodies in about two weeks to three weeks after the business plan was submitted. I really wanted to see it kind of come to life. Right. Um, and then from there, um, Shortly after I made 30 hoodies, I ordered 60 more hoodies and then 100 hoodies and then 200 hoodies and kept putting the money back in. Right. My father gave me the 800 bucks to buy the first 30 hoodies and so that gave me the money that I didn't have to go and buy the inventory. Right. And then everything went back into the business so we never got like a $10,000 loan or anything like that. It was just the 800 bucks and everything has been generated off the 800 bucks still today 10 years later. So it's been cool to really just use what we have and be lean and the lean startup book we we read that in school that taught me a lot about like use what you have don't you know don't go get all these loans right. start simple that's why 30 hoodies i was like that's a lot of hoodies but it's right. not gonna like you know drain my bank account for my whole life right. if yeah. i did 3,000 hoodies then yeah. you know that could be another story right um so then i started selling them at campus i'd put them in my backpack walk around sell two to three a day and then all of a sudden we had a, a little bit of a momentum building where I was selling you know a hundred a week at school mm -hmm. and this is probably like eight weeks in and so then Sidney Crosby contacted me and was like I wanted some of your product can I get a hoodie and so I drove into the city from Wolfville got on the bus got my backpack went in um, went to the arena it was in at the Civic in Halifax and he said pretty much my buddy who was his trainer was like you can come through this secret door don't bring anyone else one box, don't, no photos. Right. So I was like, cool. So I had like 10 tank tops with me and t-shirts. So I walked in, I dropped the box of gear off in their dressing room. It's like Marshawn, McKinnon, Sid, Matt Duchesne, Stamkos, a lot of big name NHL players are all there and I'm like 21. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, this is crazy. My <laughs> first experience around NHL players like that with the brand. Dropped the box off, went and watched the game, or the practice, sorry. Then one by one, they come out and they're wearing the shirts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not allowed to take any photos. Right. So I'm kind of like wanting to take my yeah. phone out, but I know I'll, I'll get in trouble. So I didn't do it. And then about a week later, I'm looking on social media, obviously Instagram, the hashtags are there. Mm -hmm. So if you hashtag Sidney Crosby, you'll see every photo of Sid. Mm -hmm. I start looking at that every day, hoping that one day Sid will be wearing the shirt that I had actually taken off my back because everyone took the shirts out of the box and took them all. Mm -hmm. the trainer came running out, I forgot to add this in and he pretty much said they took all the shirts and so i took my large shirt off swear to god and gave it to the trainer yeah. my buddy gave me a hoodie that i could just throw on right. and sid ended up wearing that shirt out that day that so cool. and then the, i can show you the photo which we can maybe pop yeah. up in the podcast here but yeah. essentially um he wore he wore it in la and a girl took a photo with him and then that was like the the it's real small. snowball yeah right. and then coming into christmas 2013 you can imagine if crosby's wearing your shirt all the young kids that play hockey here, they want to wear what he's wearing. So then it just came another level. Yeah. Um, so huge shout out to Sidney Crosby. That was a yeah. game changer. And uh, that literally changed yeah. our lives because we went from like, you know, 100 t-shirts a week to like mm -hmm. 10,000 a month. And we had no clue how to scale, but we right. just had to le learn and roll with the punches. Right. How that's do you kinda, think he heard about the brand? Great question. I know I went to school with a few of his close friends like okay. that are younger. Um, um, shout out to Alexi Pianosi. He'd be the main guy. Right. Um, and so Alexi pretty much said, uh, you know, I grew up playing hockey with him in the city. He's his trainer still today, 10 years later. And he, he was the one that let me in the room right. that day. Um, so I think Alexi probably told him about the brand or said like, there's this new Nova Scotia company all about being proud of where you're from. You should check it out. You're from Cole Harbor. Right. And then, it, you know, he didn't even contact me directly. It was his people. And then right. since then we've talked a couple times. I've met him in Pittsburgh once and got to meet him and say thank you for the support and everything. He's obviously the, the best Nova Scotian I think to ever live. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the goat. So right. really nice guy. And yeah, a lot of respect for him supporting our brand. Um, from day one and never asking for money or anything. He just right. naturally wore it, which was really cool. Yeah. Currently, I do all the social media and all of the kind of like partnerships, collaborations and growth of the company. And we have 35 staff now, so obviously we have people doing all sorts of stuff, but I, I tend to control the culture of the online image of the brand. So I do all the East Coast lifestyle for Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, LinkedIn, 
Um, and then it, you know, any other apps that come up, I have to constantly research and learn trends. How do we relate? How do we, it's 10 years in, so we can't do the same thing in 2013 now. Yeah. You gotta do reels, you gotta do stories, you gotta do, you know, tag product posts, you gotta do collab posts, all this stuff that's yeah. new and trending. So learning, uh, pivoting, and trying to figure out how do we get into the States next um, and trying to grow would be my current role. For sure. So I went to school in the city. I went to QEH. I played hockey grade 10, 11, and 12. Played football grade 12. That taught me a lot about teams, mm -hmm. leadership, character, hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, practice at 6 in the morning. You don't want to go there. You got to do it. Right. It sucks, but you got to do it. Yeah. Um, all that stuff just teaches you, I think, to do things that you don't always like to get the reward at the end of the day. So that taught me a lot. And school, again, I struggled through school. I never was a A student. I was always the C and B guy. Mm -hmm. But I, I always tried really hard in team projects and, like, attendance and tried to do stuff that I could outside of tests, okay. knew, knowing that I was probably not going to do well on the tests. I got to make up in the other areas. So mm. uh, that's still how I kind of do things today. And through, mm. through, uh, through university, always struggled through tests, but just kind of always made up for it in the other areas that mm. to get through, but never got really a lot of A's. Mm. This was my only A plus <laughs> in the whole school that I ever got. So, right. um, you know, a couple A minuses and stuff, but this was the one, the venture creation class was the one that really uh, made me passionate and allowed me to kind of like tunnel vision on something, but everything else was a struggle uh, through school, to be honest, yeah. Definitely the back row kid. Yeah. Um, that would be struggling to, I have definitely have ADD that never was addressed, right. <laughs> but I think that it's fine if you can kind of cope and manage with it. Right. Um, but I really struggle to pay attention and I can barely read a book kind of thing. Right. So it's it's really hard for me to focus on something. Right. But it's because I, I kind of have the monkey brain where ideas are kind of coming quickly, but you can't right. process them. Yeah. Um, so school was tough and I was never the first row note guy, but now ironically, every day I start my day off and I write down my to-do list oh, yeah. and I cross things off once at a time and still, still do that every single day, pencil and paper, not on the phone. Right. So I'm kind of old school like that and kind of analog, but I, I definitely think school taught me a lot about like discipline and doing things that you don't always like and then learning how to like meet people and connect with people and, and create uh, you know connections that are outside the classroom as well. So when I was in school, I really enjoyed the group projects. So being able to get hands on with like, let's say a case study where at Acadia, one that we always did was with Just Us. They always asked us to analyze Just Us. It's a coffee startup out of Wolfville, small business that's sourcing coffee beans from places like Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and abroad, all fair trade. They're paying the farmers directly. They're bringing it all in. They're able to compete with Tim Hortons and all that kind of great stuff at a price point. Um, so learning all of that stuff hands-on taught me like marketing. They'd, they'd be like, put a marketing plan in place for Just Us to scale in 2013 back then. And I'd be like, oh, that's cool. Like they should be on Instagram doing you know this and getting influencers to hold up their coffee bags and they should right. do all this stuff. So that stuff made me want to do it myself because I was right. planning it for them. And then I was like, I could do it. I can do it with Sidney Crosby with our clothing. And that would do really well because I'm pretty much pitching just us to do the same thing for coffee. Right. So then I started to get my, my gears going about like, well, if I'm pitching this for just us, maybe I could build my own company and do this marketing plan for this company. Right. And then it all kind of fell in line. Right. But tests were always a thing that I would go home and study for like a week straight and, and still get a 70. Right. And then the group projects would make me go home and I'd stay up till like 4 a.m. watching Dragon Center Shark Tank, learning like how they're getting roasted and right. how they can improve and then trying to like mental note that and then right. keep it stored in the memory bank. Right. Um, but I'd say the group projects were my favorite and then being able to study real life cases like those marketing cases was the right. best tool that I was ever given because it allowed me to kind of like dissect businesses and then pitch them, you know, these concepts of how they could kind of scale. And then that all get, got my gears going to, right. to do what it did for East Coast Lifestyle. Yeah. So would you say that like a traditional approach where you're told to sit and listen for an hour and take notes would absolutely not work for you? No, and I think it's different for everyone. Like right. there's a lot of operations courses at school and accounting and, and finance where it's literally, you know, nine o'clock, teacher starts and no class input is given mm -hmm. to, the pro to the class. It's all just professor to class. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for someone like myself to digest because I would like to, you know, give two cents or hear or you know, have a student give their input on what's happening or have someone else say, you know, can you back up and say that again? Right. 
but it's, it's so fast processing at university because there's so many smart people and there's a mm -hmm. scale of 99 students to the 60 students, right. but everyone's digesting at a different rate. Yeah. So it's hard to keep up and then I'd be going home and I'd be like, can you tell me how this worked or like how this, right. you know, to the smarter kids? Right. And then it's, it's really hard to keep up because then you got to go to the next class, the next class, yeah. the next class. And if you're not a good student and you can't process and then you go to the bar, you might forget right. everything. <laughs> so it's like it's hard to be real with you and, and like, you know, be a student and play sports, right. have a social life, digest information, take notes, retain right. the information and then right. get tested on it. Right. So I think it's really hard. And I, I struggled through it. But right. again, like having the balance of attendance, class projects, school. Yeah tests and all that stuff allowed me to, to get through but I it's not a transcripts aren't something I'm proud of to show right. anyone if you know what I mean so yeah. it's it's That's kind okay. of got it done really yeah. happy to get it done my parents are really happy because I wanted to dip out at third year when right. the East Coast was kind of going strong um, but kept going to online school to get it done it took me an extra year but got right. it done <laughs>
10x what a textbook could do because right. it was a real life situation. So. I think grade 10 should be pretty basic, like get to know yourself and learn what you excel in and what you don't excel in. And then in grade 11, you can start focusing on your strengths and what you're passionate about. But really, it's, it's kind of, you got to take it all in grade 12. You got to do high level English and math and all that stuff and memorize formulas where a lot of people aren't analytical enough to memorize formulas and, and do stuff like that. So I think it should be a little easier on the high school students. Um, but grade 10 should be a real trial year where it's like there's not a lot of hard feelings. Just try everything. And if you get a D, then that's fine. Just yeah. don't do that in grade 11 and 12. Yeah. But it's really like you got to take all the stuff that you don't like throughout your whole high school, which is kind of hard on the student's mental health, too, I believe, because you're, you're trying to do stuff you're and you're not excelling. Yeah, and it's really tough on people. Yeah, I'd say just the steps of starting a business, to be real. Um, you know, like learning how to register a business is not very expensive. It's like $200, I think, currently to register a business, but it's a process that takes a lot of um, research and, and getting the right information. Um, then trademarking and then scaling and all that kind of stuff. How do you get into retail stores? How do you get online? How do you create a website? All that stuff is very valuable, and I think that should be put into the curriculum because in 2023, everything's online, exactly. especially post-pandemic. So the more that we can teach online marketing tools, the better. Like when I went through school, TikTok wasn't there. Instagram was just starting and Facebook was around obviously. Um, but we didn't learn anything about marketing on those, those um, platforms at all. It was all about like billboard, radio, TV. It's not that way anymore. Yeah. It's 2023. It's oh, now it's TikTok, yeah. Instagram, and YouTube. So it's, it's always changing. So I think that should be put into the new um, marketing material because you know next year it's going to be probably the next app or whatever or the next the next wave of marketing. So keeping up with the changes. And yeah, it's important.